Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back. Welcome back to the channel. <laughs> Hope you're all good. And uh, today is gonna be another car vlog and a bit of my session. Uh, my session's pushed today. So I don't think you've seen a push workout for a little bit. So that'll be good. Um, but yeah, I hope you're all well. I'm well. Um, had a lot going on recently with the Team MBM meetup, which is probably one of the best days of my life. I had my mum's service as well last week, um, and that was lovely as well. Obviously, very emotional, and yeah, it was difficult. It's been a difficult few days, if I'm honest. I'm not going to get too in depth about it, but I've still not been feeling myself, to be honest. Not. It's really hard to describe, but it's like even stuff that should usually make me happy or make me very happy isn't making me happy. Um, my emotions are just a bit skewed. It's, it feels almost like, you know when you're contest prepping and your emotions are very skewed, you're, you're not really feeling that positive, even in times which should be positive. Like I can remember winning shows and just not feeling right, just not feeling positive. And then only, like, it took me a week to sort of settle into it. And then I was like, oh, okay, you know, these things are good things. It's the, it's the delayed response to something. I think it, everything feels like it's going at a very slow pace. Um, but in turn, the days feel like they're going very fast. Very odd feelings, but um, I, can, I can understand why I'm feeling like this. It's not, it's not confusing to me as to why I'm feeling a bit odd. Um, it <laughs> shouldn't be confusing to anyone else either. It's, it's, it's quite normal for people to feel like this in phases that are very odd and unexpected. So mm, I, I wanted to talk about in the car today. I wanted to talk about a topic. I had it in my head and I thought, okay, let's, let's, let's go with this. It's, um, it's the reality of, of an off-season and, and, and being confident. And a lot of the time you see the people that don't grow on restricted calorie intakes, trying to adhere to staying relatively lean, which of course, can you can argue, has some benefits in terms of insulin sensitivity and your ability to partition nutrients, which is very, very true. However, they simply do never push up calories enough to elicit enough weight gain to see considerable amounts of muscle tissue added. Whether they're natural or enhanced, just doesn't happen. I read an awesome article, it's an old one, by Dante Trudell, um, who founded sort of the DC training, dog crap training, um, and he speaks a lot of sense. He also relays in the article that its relevance is not just to assisted bodybuilders, but it's also really very relevant to, to naturals as well, unassisted. The reality is, most diets that you see people go on for a gaining phase are significantly lower in calories than you would imagine would get them to grow the tissue that they want to grow. My goal, and my goal remains, to be accruing as much tissue as possible. And the metabolic processes that go on in order to build that amount of tissue are large. So the demand for nutrients is large. Now, there's not been really much research. The research does suggest that when comparative calorie surpluses are compared, we see very much minimal difference in a large surplus versus a small surplus in terms of actual muscle gain. But I, I, I'd imagine if you read deeper, and I haven't, so I can't comment, but I'd imagine if you read deeper into those studies, you'd realize that they're most likely not done on highly trained individuals. They're probably done on intermediate to advanced, where in reality, they can just gain tissue on any surplus, moderate, large, medium, whatever. So you've got to look elsewhere, and this is where the anecdotal side of bodybuilding comes in, and you've got to really see who out there that's very big as a natural bodybuilder, what, what, what do they do? What have they done? Is, is the main question. And, and it usually comes back to one variable. We see that the biggest natural bodybuilders around have at some point pushed their body weight up significantly. And by, by significantly, I mean 
like 40, 50, 60 pounds above stage weight. And when they come back down, they are generally the people that have made massive improvements. They look like they've almost added five to 10 pounds of lean mass, which by the books is something that's not really that possible. And a lot of people will say, oh, well, you know, they're out of condition or they weren't as in good condition. But, but you see it time and time again, that these people make, make large improvements. Now, the counter argument of, of that is that a lot of this is genetic potential. Whether someone has the genetics to, to place that amount of muscle on their frame. But I'd argue again that the ability of them to, to pack on that tissue has been because they were willing and confident enough to push up their body weight in significant amounts to see strength come up in significant amounts, um, recovery capabilities come up in significant amounts, therefore the ability to handle greater training volumes is there, the ability to handle um, larger loads under greater leverages is there. There's a lot of things that do come as positives as a result of a large calorie surplus and a large amount of body weight gain. So. It's an argument that we could always have, and it's an argument that will probably go on for, for decades and for a long time. Fuck me, that's warm. It's a little bit more than warm, it's hot. I believe that I've definitely burnt my lip on that. Well, that's a great start to the session. And um, yeah, so what, what we're really arguing here is, is, is how much body weight do we gain? Um, uh, what's the maximum amount of tissue that you can really accrue as a natural bodybuilder? Do we listen to just the research or do we follow anecdote? And uh, I, I, I really am a believer in, in following a lot of anecdote. As much as you would have realised through following my content, I, I do like anecdotes. Um, so if, if we take a few few natural bodybuilders that have really pushed up their body weights, um, Richard Gozecki is probably one of the uh, one of the main ones that I've seen. Um, in recent years that, that does definitely have confidence in, in eating a lot of food and pushing his body weight up significantly. The guy's an absolute ox. He's probably one of the, well, he, he was and is still one of the next best natural bodybuilders in the world. And uh, he, he's, he's not shy to getting heavy and eating lots and being strong. Um, and of course, he's, I think he's, believe, I believe he's dealt with a, a, few, a fair few injuries. But, you know, and I look back almost like where I built the most of my tissue and I thought, you know, I was maybe making the most, most progress. And I, I do think that it was in my initial phases, of course, because when you're younger, you do definitely put on more tissue. You, as a newbie, you're just going to be in a position where your your, your, your ability to put on tissue is, is certainly there. But I, I almost want to be a bit of a case study as to whether this can be something that we should be doing. So. My goal in this scaling phase is to really be quite confident in, in pushing up uh, my body weight to, to new levels. And it scares the living shit out of me trying to think about doing it, to be honest, because I, I know that I will get relatively self-conscious at some point. I know that I won't enjoy the way that I look that much. But, guys, I want to be a professional bodybuilder here, and... I'm not going to be a professional bodybuilder if I don't do the necessary. And I put it this way, I prefer dieting. I already prefer dieting. I wish I was competing this year. I wish I was hungry right now. I wish I didn't have to eat the amount of food that I have to eat. But it's a one, it's a fucking blessing to be able to eat a lot of food and train well and recover nicely. And you know, you gotta look at all of the positives. I'm very strong, I'm loving my training. My sex drive is there, like I'm, I'm actually feeling like a human, you know, and all of these things, I'm not thinking about food. It's, all of these things are very good and positive things to, to connotate with training, uh, sorry, to connotate with the gaining phase. And not a lot of people focus on them, instead they just focus on the fact that their face is fatter and they haven't got shredded abs, which is holding them back from a lot of their progress. So for me at the moment, I could quite easily get happy at this body weight. I could quite easily just see how strong I could get at this body weight and, you know, see as to whether I can, you know, compete in powerlifting and get a good Wilkes or, you know, but that's not the goal, is it? It's really not the goal. And I've got to keep my mindset straight on the goal, which is to gain as much muscle as I possibly can 
and have enough muscle to to compete at a very high level when I next return to the stage and I simply have not got that level of muscle mass at the moment. Um, I perhaps have got enough to be competitive on my lower body but my my arms, my chest, and pretty much my entire upper body besides my back really needs to, really needs to be brought up. It really does and that's the reality of the situation and it, and it will, <laughs> it will, it will. There's no, there's no chance that I'm not bringing every single body part significantly up um, I, I won't let it not happen you know um, and if I'm if I'm not happy with what I see at the end of this year next year whatever it just it, it needs as much time as it requires so that wasn't alluding to competing in 2019 you know this is road to 2020 isn't it after all uh, we'll see <laughs> I said to myself I said to myself after my year of competing as a teen, I was like, okay, two years off now, I'll come back as a junior in this year. Um, take two years off. And, uh, well, I wonder how well I would have done. I don't know. I wonder if I wouldn't have been competing against big old Taff. <laughs> might have done even better. But I might have done even worse. You know, you never know. So uh, I'm going to leave it here. I'm almost at the gym. It's nailing in this black coffee that's now at an adequate temperature to drink. The gym closes at five. Well, luckily, I've got three hours, so I should be fine. My sessions are quite long. Um, so, yeah, guys, uh, I'm going to leave it here. Any questions, please ask, and we'll chat in a bit. Alright guys, finishing up the vlog with a bit more of my face. Uh, so thank you for watching, and uh, I hope that you liked the chat at the beginning. It was a bit of a different one, for sure. And uh, any questions as usual, just ask. And make sure that if you want to see sort of more frequent, better quality content, going into more, like, in more in-depth of my sessions, especially, like, the, the workouts and also my training split and my just general thoughts on nutrition, training, and bodybuilding, Make sure to join my membership site, which is www.madebymorriscoaching.com. And then you select the membership option, set up the PayPal payment, which is $4.99 a month. It's like a Subway sandwich, a Subway sandwich, come on guys. And then set up an account and uh, yeah, you get access to almost 100 videos now. So there's a lot from my prep. Uh, there's a lot of just general informative videos. 
uh, some nutrition videos and also a lot of training videos. So yeah, hope you're all good guys and uh, we will chat very soon. See you in a bit, bye.